glad to share uh, a little bit of what we did in Vacation Bible School this week with you. And uh, right before the sermon, we'll have a special video that my friend put together that uh, shows all kinds of fun that we had. And then uh, in the message, we're going to walk through the major points of what we did. So I'm glad to share that with you uh, today. i got a few announcements for you. Uh, we got started here, so new portals of prayer are available. You can get those at any exit, so there's some by that door. There's some in here in the little uh, track rack that we have in here, and then, of course, there's some in the dark decks, so you can grab those for uh, the new quarter. Uh, let's see, of course, we are getting ready for the youth gathering in Houston. Very excited for that. That's going to be July 9th uh, through 13th, so we'll have Pastor Boykin that weekend, so sorry, but you know, I'll be youth gathering with our friends, so I know we're excited. Um, let's see what I want to say about youth gathering. So pray for us, would you please pray for us for a bit of travel and all of that, and then all a good time over there, and there's a lot going on. Um, we are not having our Texas Showdown and Trivia that was originally scheduled today, so we have quite enough participation for it. Um, so that's not going on. We are still doing Flamingo Flocking, so that is a senior youth fundraiser. It goes to our trip. Um, so a reminder about that. Uh, well, we're excited for what's coming up next month. Uh, let's see here. Big important announcement. It is time, like way over time, for a new pictorial directory. Um, there aren't any new ones since I've been here. So I'm looking at the old one. Far few changed. Yeah. <laughs> You're even more beautiful now than you were back then.
deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and it is for his sake that he forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We speak our intro at this day responsibly. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Thy glory may be loud in our mind. Steadfast love and faithfulness meets. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness will go before him. And may his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and their praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
together? We'll call it to the day. Lord of all power and might, honor and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, and nourish us with all goodness, that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Against such 
things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise to the Alleluia and read the gospel.
decision.
Our Bible story for day two continued Joseph's roller coaster ride of an incredible story. Joseph, after doing quite well for himself in Egypt, rising to a respectable position in the house of respected Potiphar, Joseph once again found himself cast out. After the unfortunate run-in with one Mrs. Potiphar, Joseph again finds himself imprisoned. And it was there again, sitting in a cell, that Joseph must have been tempted to believe, this is it, that God is now no longer with me. Why does this keep happening? When we walk through difficult time after difficult time after difficult time, we too might be tempted to believe the same. Where is God? Has he forgotten me? But it was God's provision and gift to Joseph, the gift of his dream interpretation that once again drew Joseph out of the pit of danger. Joseph was reminded, and he reminds us, that there is no place that God cannot see you. There is nothing you are dealing with that God does not know. You have never and will never fight a battle alone or be shoved out of God's eternal care. Joseph's story reminds us of day two's take-home point. God is with you everywhere. There you go. Thank you. We met a speedy roadrunner named Mike on day two who can outrun pretty much anything she comes across. But Miley reminded the kids there is one thing she cannot run. That is God. How incredible is it to know that the God of the universe not only has you on his radar, not only is intimately connected with your everyday life, but he knows that which was and is and is to come. God knows every trouble every struggle, every temptation, every sin, every suffering that is coming your way. And he is still promised good to you. He has still said, take heart, I have overcome the world. When Yahweh was preparing the commander of the Lord's army, his name was Joshua, for what was going to come his way, he speaks, speaks these time-tested words of courage, which we can take great comfort in, and it was our Bible memory verse for day two, from Joshua 1.9, For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Day three, Joseph's wild ride did end there. Joseph finds himself, by the grace of God, in a great position of power in one of the greatest kingdoms ever on this earth. We are told in the scripture that there was nobody in Egypt greater than Joseph except for Pharaoh himself. Joseph is number two man in all of the land of Egypt. At his word, things happened. Things got done. And yet, Joseph knew it was not his word, but God's, that lasted forever. He knew the one who was really in charge. Joseph knew that it wasn't him that was in charge. It wasn't even Pharaoh who was that in charge. God's in charge. Joseph had been in the lowest of lows already, more than once. And is now at the highest of highs. And he knows the one who has seen him through it all. He knows the God who has been in control of it all. It's a constant reminder for our life that just, just when we think we have things under control, just when we think that we are at the wheel, the master of our fate, the captain of our soul, the truth comes out. 
We are nothing apart from Christ. We are zero outside of God's love. Power comes and goes. Control is often an illusion. But the truth of day three's take home point remains. God is in charge. Awesome, awesome God. God has been in charge. He is currently in charge. And he will be in charge tomorrow. He raises up and brings down. He brings people into positions of authority, and that authority lasts a little while. Our coyote buddy named Howell reminded the kids that although he is on top of his food chain and his desert dwelling, he is nothing without God's provision. God has provided Howell with ears that hear very well, eyes that see far distances, and an intellect that works to provide food for the pups of his family. God is in charge of these things. And he provides according to his gracious and eternal love for us. Joseph knew that God was in charge of him, and that he was in charge of Pharaoh, and that he was in charge of the people of Egypt and in fact the all of the world. And he took heed to the word of God delivered to him in those dreams. The people of Egypt and even his own family from far away they were saved from the death of famine by God's powerful word. Our Bible verse for day 3 proclaimed this truth from Psalm 147 verse 5 how great is our Lord. His power is absolute. Day four, we took a break from Joseph's story. To once again tell the kids the greatest story ever told. And the greatest story ever told is the gospel story. The true historical account of Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection. We met a pretty tough little Bible buddy by the name of Rolo, the armadillo. Armadillo means little armored one. He was a tough guy. It was a girl, I think. I'm not sure. Was it? Of course. Oh, it was a girl. Okay, yes. I couldn't tell. Rolo was tough. With seven plus plates of armor, Rolo could protect herself from attacks of many different kinds. The truth is, Rolo isn't stronger than anything. You got the text that shed you. Okay. Although God gave Rolo armor, she had to rely on God's power every day. One day, we will die. We are not stronger than death. We know the one who is stronger than death. Which is what made day four's Bible story of the resurrection of Jesus so important. And that leads us to day four's take home point. God is stronger than anything. Awesome God. Not even death. Not even death could stop. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, who is the Christ, the Son of God. Through his resurrection, Jesus promises that all who have faith in him will be forgiven, will be redeemed, will be made perfect for eternal life in his kingdom. There is no other name by which we must be saved than that of Jesus of Nazareth. There is no other God no other religion, no other philosophy, ideology, or false god of this world that can do this, that can beat death. And no matter how tough we believe we are, 
no matter how impressive that some people in this world may seem. The truth is, God is stronger than anything, and only God is stronger than anything. We sent the kids home with the memory verse demonstrating God's absolute power. And just by coincidence, it's from the best chapter in all of the Bible, Romans 8. Verse 38, Paul writes, And I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. The final day of EBS, day five, we found ourselves again returning to Joseph's story to see God's epic conclusion of his story in Genesis. What a surprise it must have been for Joseph to see his brothers again coming to buy grain from Egypt. I wish I was there. What a surprise it must have been for Joseph's brothers to learn what happened to their baby brother. And what an incredible surprise it must have been for Joseph's father, Jacob, to learn that his boy was alive and doing quite well. God does surprising things. Well, all of the scripture, God does surprising things that bless us in incredible ways. Our Bible buddy, Jet, the Jet Rabbit, reminded us that with her keen hearing and lightning fast burst speed, she was ready for any surprise that came her way in the desert. And believe me, I've jumped quite a few jackrabbits walking through the desert and it's a surprise on both ends. <laughs> Take home point for day five. God is surprising. Awesome, awesome God. God. Just when we believe something is a lost cause. Just when we believe something is done, over, God does something surprising. The devil believed he had won when Jesus died on the cross. And God said, no, this is for the forgiveness of sins, the atonement of the world. And just when the disciples believed their ministry was over, their master was dead, God surprised everyone by raising the son from the dead. And just when we think that God cannot work, cannot fix, cannot solve, he does something surprising, something that only he can do. Those God's surprises make our faith bold and our hope secure. The final memory verse we shared with the kids encourages us not only to glory in those miraculous things, that's only one part, but to share those things with the world. From Psalm 66, 5, come and see what our God has done, what awesome miracles he performs to people. Dear friends, we had an incredible BBS this week at Man. And I hope that you feel like you were there just a little bit. I want to thank everybody who participated in DBS. I want to thank Mark Emma, our DBS director. Yeah. I want to thank our many site leaders and crew leaders who made it this week possible. I want to thank each and every one of you for your support, whether you brought snack supplies or carted kids back and forth to Emmanuel or pray for our success. You were a big part of what God has done this past week. Thank you for sharing the ministry of Jesus' church and the eternal truth of his gospel. That is who our God is and that is what our God continues to do here and now. That is his monumental love. May the peace of God who surpasses all understanding Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and confess our Christian faith this morning in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of being, being of one substance.
with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of our salvation, when your son set his face to go to Jerusalem and the cross, his zeal will not be deterred. Grant us to pray with the same fervor and boldness, trusting that you hear us for the sake of the Son of Man. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of the church, you give pastors and church workers to proclaim your steadfast love, to announce freedom from the yoke of slavery to sin, and to point all toward the cross of Christ. Bless their faithful work, that their labor in the Lord may never be in vain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you establish the family to be a place of protection and growth. Grant that our homes would never become a stumbling block to the kingdom of God but that they would serve to foster within us the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. God of all power and might, to you belong the kingdom and the glory forever. Give insight and wisdom to our president, governor, legislature, and magistrates. Direct them to punish evildoers, reward the righteous, and strive for peace. Grant that all people may live quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of refuge, your salvation draws near to all who trust in you. Grant peace to your people and show us your salvation. Hear our petitions for healing, strength, and comfort, and receive our thanksgivings this day. Lord, we give you thanks that our brother Dan Crowder is now home and free from brain bleeding. Thank you that he's with us here this morning. We ask that you continue to bless him in the days ahead with healing and strength. We praise you for a wonderful Vacation Bible School this week. May your word dwell in the hearts um, of these children and remind them of your enduring love. We give you great thanks, Lord, for the birth of Gracelyn Marie Schrader to Nolan and Tally Schrader yesterday. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless them, be with mother and baby as they are uh, doing well, and especially with Tally in this time recovering uh, after surgery. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would be with um, Sheila Coleman, Melody Hankel's sister, diagnosed with stage 3 cancer, um, that you would give her um, comfort and peace in this time and healing, Lord, according to your will. For Eli Griego, um, one of our preschool students, undergoing a cranial surgery to close up a soft spot in his um, skull, Lord, we ask that that might go well and that he would be blessed through that. For the Sandoval family, Lord, um, winning the passing of Nas, um, this is one of our preschool families as well, uh, that you would bring comfort and peace uh, from above. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would bless um, Pat and Phil Snyder, former members of Emmanuel, as Pat has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, Lord. Um, we ask that you would provide in this time, according to your will, and above all things, comfort and peace for the family. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of holiness, in this heavenly food and drink, you graft into our hearts the love of your name. As you create new hearts within us, bless us with the fruit of the Spirit, that our love for you might be expressed for our neighbor's good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting.
trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Together sing the offertory. <laughs>
for the the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Christ strengthen you in body and in soul unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Sins forgiven. Amen. Amen. Let us stand together and sing. Thank you.
friends, you can go today and God's peace blesses your week. Thanks be to our God. I'll see you in the back. Thank you.